Crash Adventures. Welcome back. My name is George. If you're new to the uh, channel, we're uh, happy to have you here. I uh, apologize first off for my voice, dealing with a little bit of uh, seasonal fall allergies, but uh, let's get to our September targets so you can start planning ahead. Now, for the month of September, we're going to be saying goodbye to the Milky Way. The Milky Way is uh, starting to dive south. The core is already, you know, went over the horizon there. And the good targets are really, you know, we're, we're looking at this is where there's a lot of good stuff. It's below the 30 degree um, line there. And, you know, it's going to quickly fall over the horizon. And honestly, I really, you know, they're by 10 o'clock. Look how low this is getting. So in my opinion um the milky way it's gone you know it's over so bye bye milky way we'll uh see you next time around now uh with that for those that are not quite ready to stick a fork in this bird cygnus is still available now in my area here in utah checking on timeanddate.com midnight or excuse me not midnight Total dark for me happens at nine o'clock at night. Nine o'clock at night, Cygnus the Swan is sitting straight up overhead. And then as the night goes on, so here we are 2100, nine o'clock at night, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. You see, see it's still sitting up here high. Midnight, midnight, it starts to dive down. 1 a.m. Here's where we've got Cygnus. We're coming around. There's your 45 degree. There's your 40 degree line. 2 a.m. It's now diving below 40 degrees. I prefer to shoot my images above 40 degree, but you could hang on, you know, depending on what your, you know, sky conditions are. But by 3 a.m., here we go. It's diving. It's below 40. Good portion of it's below 30 at this point. So I really feel like this is probably your last chance to get some really good hours on it if you're a diehard. And like I said, you're not quite ready to stick a fork in this swan yet. So with that one out of the way, let's take a look over here to the east. This is always our annual beginner target and uh even those of us that are experienced we come back to this one many many times the andromeda galaxy nine o'clock at night where i am here in northern utah we're sitting at 32 degrees by 10 o'clock back this out a little bit it's above the 40 degree mark which in my opinion is where you're you're in great skies so andromeda m31 uh, this is absolutely a great target uh, for our beginners as well as those wanting to revisit it. The other thing that I want to mention is for those of you that are shooting with a prime lens, maybe you have the Samyang 135, maybe you have, um, and, and I probably working off of a DSLR crop sensor, you can go up to about a 300 millimeter prime with this, but I'm specifically mentioning the primes. One of the things that you could do, because the more hours that you can get on a target, the more signal to noise and, and just plain English, the better your image is going to be. And with a prime, because you have that fixed focal length, you could actually accumulate over time because with a zoom lens, even though you may have it where looking at the the information display let's say the camera is reading 300 millimeters is what your zoom lens is is that there's slight variances and a zoom lens it's just not doable but if you had a prime lens say the samyang 135 you had the uh a nikon 300 millimeter prime one of these fixed prime focal lengths you could actually shoot this over the course of the winter gathering five hours here six hours here five hours another night you know going for that 20 25 hours 
the more hours you can add, the better your image, and the more structure you're going to have. But you can do that with a prime because your focal length has no variance. You, of course, do need to make sure that your focus is there. But for those of you that, you know, like I said, you're, you're, you know, you can't afford a, a telescope. You're not on that fixed focal length. You can do the same thing with your prime lens for your camera. So consider that. And Andromeda would be great because I know what the uh, Samyang 135, that is a popular lens. Lots of them out there. Lots of people shooting them. And you could accumulate a lot of hours. Just so you know, with that, whatever hours you have, let's say you shoot four hours. To see a noticeable difference, you would then have to add enough hours to double what you already have. So if you start off with, say, four hours, where you're really going to notice some kind of a difference will be when you have eight hours worth of data. From eight hours, you need to double that up to about 16. Generally, it's doubling what you have that you're going to accumulate enough information to really show a marked difference in this. Uh, personally, I have found that once I hit somewhere between 20 and 30 hours, um, I'm getting the diminished returns at that point. But you could certainly achieve you know, 20 hours of data and really collect a lot of great structure on a target such as Andromeda. So consider that uh, ideally with Andromeda, you're going to be looking at anywhere, you know, shooting from 200 to 400. However, like I said, with that Samyang 135 and being able to accumulate many, many hours over the course of many, many nights, I wouldn't have a problem with shooting with the 135. But uh, generally 200 to 400 is an ideal focal length for the Andromeda Galaxy. So from there... Uh, another one, and next month I'm really going to get into this one. Cassiopeia is starting to get up here. This one's going to be hanging around for quite some time. It's just entering a, a great window of, uh, of shooting opportunity. You've got the uh, Heart and Soul Nebula down here. You've got IC63, the ghost of Cassiopeia, up here, hiding very faintly. Uh, you've got the Pac-Man Nebula over here. There's a lot of great stuff, and I'm going to focus more on this one next month. But for this month, I want to jump over to Cepheus. This is going to be my focus for the month of September with some recommendations of what I'd like to uh, you know, get you out there chasing. First one that we're going to take a look at, and I brought this one up before, is the iris nebula which is ngc 7023 and here we go zooming in on that one uh this target here it's a great target you're going to want to shoot this one ideally 500 millimeters or greater and the the benefit to this one is the center area is nice bright strong and that blue pops really easily the benefit of shooting lots of hours on it is the more hours you get the more of this nebulosity of these dark clouds you'll pick up. So this is a great target to shoot. Great for beginners. You do need the long focal length, but the blue pops really easily, even for the beginners at um, you know editing these kinds of uh, photos. Uh, next, I want to jump over to I see. 1396, which is the Elephant Trunk Nebula, and this one here um, lends itself more towards your Astro Modified cameras. However, it is still doable with a stock camera and plenty of hours on the target. It is a large target. You could shoot this one, you know, between 135 and 200 millimeter. And again, going back to what I was saying about using a prime lens, if you have that prime, even though your camera may not be modified uh, as an astro camera, the benefit is, like I said, with that prime, you could accumulate enough hours over multiple nights to really bring out these reds if you didn't have a modified camera. So consider that one. And all you Samyang 135 people, great one to jump on here. 
Uh, next one in Cepheus that I want to take a look at. This one, uh, you're going to want some longer focal length and definitely lends itself to the Astro Modified. It is a smaller target. And with it, uh, it does have some pretty good red to it, but like I said, it's small. Uh, this one here, you're realistically shooting at 400 millimeters or longer. And I do kind of recommend this one for the Astro Modded because it's just, it, it's, it's decently strong, but it's not a very large target. Unlike the Elephant Nebula, it's not as strong, but there's so much of it that's there it's easier to uh, pick up than what the Wizard Nebula is. So there you go. Wizard Nebula, consider that one 400 millimeters, definitely lends itself towards uh, focal length and astro modded. The uh, next one we're going to take a look at is, let's see here, NGC 7822. I should type that in correctly. Let's see here. 7822. And this one here is known as both the question mark nebula as well as the teddy bear nebula. Frankly, I don't see either in there, but that's uh, a couple of the names for it. This one here, uh, 200 millimeters will uh, work just fine. Again, you Samian guys, this is another opportunity for many nights um, with that fixed focal length to be able to shoot this one. Pretty good uh, uh, red coming through on this one for those that are not Astro modded. And with those fixed focal length people for the Samyang, you could shoot over many nights and, you know, collect and stack that data. So this is a pretty good one to go after as well. And then from there, let's go over to NGC 7538. And this one here, this is the uh, Northern Lagoon Nebula. Uh, also, uh, with this one, small target, very small. You're going to want long focal length. And you are going to want to um, uh, use an Astro modded camera for this one. Let's take a look next over at the Cave Nebula. And that would be C9. This is another great one here. Uh, this one lends itself towards the um, Astro Modded in part for one, you're going to need long focal length, 500 millimeters plus, and then that Astro Modified is going to help you to pick up that red because it is a smaller target, unlike something like the Elephant where it's just so big and there's so much there. So for this one, 500 millimeters plus. So those are the targets that I'm recommending all around Cepheus. Cepheus will be up for the entire night, staying up in, you know, out of that lower atmosphere and the um, that green glow that we get lower in uh, the altitude. So consider Cepheus for the month. This is going to be a great one. Now, from everyone out there, I would like a little bit of help. I have not been able to identify this. All right, so here we are. We're looking at the question mark nebula. The uh, question mark nebula is uh, NGC 7822. So you got that one here. And then over here to the side, if you're using Stellarium, you'll see the Widow's Web Cluster. And you've got NGC 7788 over here. But in between these two, question mark, Widow's Web Cluster, there is this bubble. I don't know what this bubble is. And I can't seem to locate it. I've done searching online. I'm really curious as to what this is. So if anybody knows what this one is called or has some kind of identifier for it, please share it in the uh, comments below. I'm going to uh, hunt this one down myself. And uh, I think I'm going to start shooting this one because... I haven't stumbled upon it before. Now I'm really curious. It's uh, it's piqued my interest. So what is this nebula? I don't know. I'm guessing it's the leftover shell to a star um, as it just dissipates out, but I just don't know. So please, um, if you know, throw that down in the comments. Let me know. But I definitely want to go after it. And if anybody has 
already photographed this, I would love for you to pop into our uh, Facebook group, AstroVenture DSLR, and uh, jump in there and share this photo. Tell me about it. I would love to know. I'm really curious. It, it's just piqued my interest. And if I can get out, uh, you know, weather allowing, uh, if I can get out in the month of September, I'm definitely going to go after this one and see if I can't collect some uh, data on it. But I would love to be able to uh, put some kind of identification with it. But I'm definitely going to go after it myself and would love to see if anybody else has anything. So there you have it. Those are my suggestions for the month of September. Like I said, we're focusing in and around the, uh, the constellation Cepheus. Next month when we uh, meet up again, I will be uh, deep diving into Cassiopeia and we'll take a look at that one and we can expect to be saying goodbye to Cygnus after this month. I think next month will be time to stick that fork into this swan, but uh, you can grab this for the, uh, you know, just before it's gone. And then, like I said, bye-bye, Milky Way. We're going to miss you. See you around next summer. So... If you like what you're uh, seeing here at AstroVenture, consider liking, subscribing, ringing the bell, and uh, share the video out to help uh, grow the channel. And until next time, I wish you clear skies, uneventful nights, and remember, if you know what the heck that bubble was near the uh, question mark nebula, please share it below in the comments. I would love to know, and even better, if you have a, a picture of it, consider joining our Facebook group, AstroVenture DSLR, and uh, show that in there. Love to know. Until next time, clear skies.